Welcome to the journal club. This is Nanad Krishnan from Karpangalaja Pharmacy, Department of Pharmacy, Time Zone. So on today, we are going to see about then a formulation and characterization of an versatile proneurosomes. So let's see start. So and this is the citation of this article where I am referred. So title of the article is a formulation and characterization of versatile proneurosome. So author name is an Rao Rekha and it is published in the journal of in. Mahijo International Journal of Science and Technology. Now let's see then introductions. And so now let's see then introductions of about in the versatile proneurosomes. So in the management of an antihypertensive drug, there are several drugs are available in that market. In such that one class of drug is an angio two antagonist. So these drugs, if you see, means Like valsartan, olmisartan, telmisartan. So these are the drugs which are an angiotensin two antagonist. So these valsartan drug, especially an valsartan drug, is the choice of the drug for the patients who are not tolerate an about an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor drug. So this drug is then only prescribed for the patients who are not tolerate the ACE inhibitor. So and so. Valsartan drug is an available in the market in the dosage form such as a tablet and hot gelatins only. And this drug especially well observed in orally, but its bioavailability is only 23 percentage. As well as this valsartan is a poorly soluble drug. It's reported as one milligram per ml only soluble. And so let's see its molecular weight is about the 435 point gram per mole, and its melting point in the 166 to 177 degrees Celsius, and it is a low partition coefficient is a 4.5. So this is in some characteristics of involsartan. And so in before slide, I have told that the valsartan is an well observed drug, but its bioavailability is very low, only 23 percentage. So we should increase the bioavailability so that the author is decide to. Formulate a new formulation like SOMS. In that uh, vesicular carriers, he administer the drug in the vesicular carriers and he deliver it to the target area. But in the sense, the liposomes or neosomes are then advantages over the dosage forms as a drug reservoir. But in recent year, the proneosomes or neosomes are is a well drug carrier in a vesicular in a drug targeting. Especially in the proneosomes, they are using in non-ionic surfactant vessels. So these non-ionic surfactant vessels are, uh, when compared to the liposomes, the proneosomes have in very more advantages like in higher chemical stability, lower cost, and greater choice of surfactants, and get and exhibiting good chemical stability also. So these are the some advantages when compared to the liposomes, and as well as. This aqua suspension of neosomes may exhibit like aggregations, fusion, leaking. So some the limited shelf life. So this is a small disadvantage in the proneosomes or neosomes formulations. But when compared to the liposomes, it chemically will stable. And this non-ionic surfactant is a good carrier to deliver the drug to a targeted site. So and so in the last slide, I have mentioned that the aqua Suspensions of a neosomes we have some small disadvantages. So the the other reason move on to then pro neosomal approaches. In this pro neosomal approaches, it involves then a dry product or liquid crystal in gel can be hydrated immediately before use. So this type of pro neosomal approaches is an easy to transfer and distribution and storage is or uh, is easy. As well as these proneosomes are one of the water soluble carrier particles, and it is coated with the non-ionic surfactant such as an span 40, span 20. So these are one of the uh, non-ionic surfactants is coated on this. And so this aim of the study is to investigate the uh, formulation of an valsartan proneosome gel and its characteristics such as an optical scannings and transmission microscope and vessel formation morphology stability. And in vivo release of a drug and drug encapsulation. These studies are carried out in this article. Especially, this form, this aim is fully focused on the proneosomal sultan 
formulation and it is characterization. That's all. And now, let's see then what are the materials and methodologies used in these studies. Now, let's go. Now, let's see then what are the chemicals and equipments used for these formulations. So, the chemical list outs are then span 40 and span 60. These are the non ionic surfactants and soya lysine, cholesterols, and these are the uh, vesicular, vesicular formula carriers and absolute ethanol is the solvent used to solubilize this uh, soya lysine and cholesterols and span 40s. So, these dihydrogen phosphate and sodium chloride and potassium hydrogen phosphate and wild salt and is a drug. So, these are salts are used for preparation of in buffers. Next one is an equipment. What are the equipment means? A UV light microscope with a digital camera, scanning electron microscope, transition electron microscope, pH meter, centrifuges, etc. So, these are the equipments used in this uh, preparation of in pronius number formulation. And now, let's see then formulation procedures. Let's see then formulation procedure. So, for the formulation of a pronosum, uh, versatile pronosum gen, the author is used in co-observation phase separation method. So, in this method, the drug surfactant and lecithin and cholesterol were mixed with 2.5 ml of in ethanol. Well, these all the things was get soluble in the ethanol and it is a warmed for a 5 minutes at 65 degrees Celsius in water bath. So, after warming, they have slowly add uh, phosphate buffer solutions of 1.6 ml and it is again formed for a for 5, 5 to 10 minutes and it is get slowly cooled at room temperature. While get cooling, this solution get dispersed and it is converted into then pro neosomal gel. So, after forming in pro neosomal gel, it was hydrated with 10 ml of in phosphate buffer solution at 80 degrees Celsius. At this time, it converted from the gel to neosomes. After conversion of the, these neosomes were sonicated twice for 30 seconds in the center of sonications and this solution is used for a further evaluation studies. So, these steps are involved in the formulation of the Valsartan proneosomal gel. So, this table which provides an information of in the quantity of in ingredient used in the preparation of in proneosomal gel. So, let us in this formulation there are 6 preparations were prepared. So, each preparation have in a different uh, quantity of in ingredient strength. So, let us see one by one. So, for all the uh, formulations the drug quantity is in 100 milligram. And next one is a span 60, it's a non ionic surfactant. For first three formulations, they used in 1800 milligram, and another next three they use in span 40 as in non ionic surfactant, it is in 1800 milligram, and lecithin they used in 1800 milligram, and next for, uh, for four formulations, and another two that is in PN3 and PN6, they use in 900 milligram. Uh, next one you see cholesterol for uh, 5 and 2 and they use in 400 milligram of cholesterol for other formulation they use in only 200 milligram of in cholesterol so this is the formulation table now let's see then evolution test for then versatile proneosomal formulation so, these are the evolution tests which are performed for the proneosomal gel. First one is a determination of encapsulation efficiency. Next one is an optical microscope and vessel size determination. Next is in scanning electron microscopy. Next, um, term, uh, transmission electron microscopy. Uh, this uh, optical scanning and termination, these are uh, uh, especially for vessel size, vessel distributions, uh, vessel shape for determination of these only. Next one is an in vitro study release and last is in stability of emulsion and proneosomes. So, these are the uh, evolution tests for a proneosome. Now, let us see the determination of encapsulation efficiency. Before doing an encapsulation efficiency, the proneosomal gel was converted into a neosomal preparation. So, for converting 
which was centrifuged into an 18,000 RPM for 40 minutes up to 5 degrees Celsius in order to separate the drug from the vessels. So after separation, the superan liquid was taken out and this superan liquid was diluted with the phosphate buffer solution. So this solution was an assayed at the UV spectroscopic method at 250 nanometer. So after getting an absorption, it, the values were substituted in the following formula that is entrapment efficiency. The percentage it is uh, mentioned in the percentage uh, is equal to CT minus CF divided by CT into 100. The CT is a total drug concentration and CF is a concentration of an unentrapment drug which is present in the superan liquid. So this is a uh, for, um, procedure for a determination of an encapsulation efficiency. Now let's see the procedure for the determination of a size and a vessel shape of the Walsartan proneism formulation. It is used to, it is the instrument used for determination is an optical microscopy and photograph microcapsule should be taken. So a small drop of a neosomal gel was then taken and it is placed in the glass slides and it is was placed in the light microscope with a uh, specified powers use should be used. For taking in a photo micro graphs, you should take in uh, 6x optical uh, lens for taking in digital photo micro graphs. Next, uh, the proneism gel of 100 milligram, uh, which is was uh, hydrated with 10 ml of PBS, it should be taken in the glass test tube and shaken for the 5 minutes. After shaking, the resultant solution, a small drop very fine drop was taken and it is placed on the glass slide. Glass slide. These glass slides are observed under the optical microscope at 10 at 100 magnifications. After saying, you should calibrate the uh, size of the vessels by using a micrometer in the microscope. So this is the procedure for determination of a vessel size. That's all. And this is the procedure for the uh, performing the scanning electron microscopy. Through this, the neosome was then placed in an aluminum stub, which consists of a double side adhesive carbon tube. On these vessels, you should place in carbon gold or in a pallidum. Uh, by using a vacuum evaporator, it should be coated on the vessels. And finally, it is examined under the electron microscope with a digital camera at 25 kilowatts accelerating voltage. Now let's see about the transmission electromicroscopic procedure. So in this, a small drop of a neosomal dispersion was taken and it is placed in the carbon coated 300 mesh grid and it is left to adhere on carbon. So after placing this, uh, you should remove the excess amount of a drops when it is exited out from the grid. After uh, removing the excess uh, solutions or excess drop, uh, you should add in 2% of an aqueous solutions of an uranyl acetate for 35 seconds. So after adding an uh, uranyl acetate, again you should remove or uh, remove the excess amount of uh, solutions uh, when it is uh, spilled out from the uh, uh, grid. <coughs> after removing the solutions on the grid was in uh, well air dried and it is observed under the transmission electron microscopic at 19 kilowatts. So this is a transmission electron microscopic procedure to determine the morphological characteristics of a neosomal dispersion. Next upon is an in vitro release study. So in this in vitro release study, the neosomal preparation of a proneosomes was carried out by using a high media dialysis membrane. So this high media dialysis membrane only used to uh, used for in, in this study. So, before uh, placing in a dialysis membrane, it should be soaked for in warm water for in 10 minutes. Uh, in both the sites, you should be sealed with then closure clips. And after soaking, the accurately me measured amount of then Walserton neosomes, the, the prepared Walserton neosomes should be taken. It weight is equivalent to the 20 mg of in Walserton drug. It should be placed in the dialysis membrane. And this dialysis membrane was placed in the beaker. It should contain a phosphate buffer solutions of 75 ml, which is uh, act as a receptor compartment. And after placing the uh, neosomal preparation 
in the dialysis bag in the beaker. This beaker was then placed in the magnetic stirrer. Uh, it should be stirred up to 100 RPM and the temperature was maintained up to 70, 37 degrees Celsius for the period of 24 hours. And for the each period, the aliquots of in 1 ml should be withdrawn from the buffer solution, from the receptor compartment. And this receptor compartment was then maintained with the sink conditions throughout the experiments. So, after withdrawing the sample, it should be uh, diluted when it is necessary. It should be diluted with the PBS solution, the other is a phosphate buffer solution. And it was measured and then under the UV spectroscopy at 250 nanometer. So, this is the procedure for the in vitro release studies. And this is the procedure for the stability study. So, this proneosomal gel was in carried as per an ICH guidelines. So, these samples was sealed with 20 ml of glass vials. So, it is a well closed glass vessels should be taken and it is filled with the proneosomal samples and it is stored in the 4 to 8 degrees Celsius. This is in degree Celsius and 37 degrees Celsius for one month. There is an only two temperature was in a, uh, carried out in this experiment. First one is in 4 to 8 degree and second one is in 37. That is a room temperature. So, the efficiency the entrapment efficiency of the drug sample was determined by using a uh, UV spectroscopy at 250 milligram, 250 nanometers. So this is a stability study procedure. And now let's see then results and discussion of then uh, the preferred formulations. So this is the, there is in two images. The first image is in the photomicrographic of in PN1 that is in a first formulation of in proneosomal and second image is in PN2 it is a second formulation. So the first formulation is contains in span 60 and second formulation is contains in uh, span 40. So in this solution you can see able to see that the first uh, the PN1 formulation the vessel size is in more larger than the second one. So it's a more larger uh, uh, vessel size and there is no agglomeration, aggregation or any other uh, aggregation is not occurred in the solutions. And as well as this uh, PN2 also, there is no any aggregation is then formed. So this is then visual image of, image of then your proneosome. And these two images, next one is a scanning and transmission. And uh, this image is transition electron microscopy. So, from this result, you can able to see that there is no any aggregations and uh, all the vessels are in a spherical in shape with a short boundary and large interactive spaces. So the, you can able to see that uh, there is a lot of spaces, there is no aggregation. The particles, uh, the particles are very individual in nature. So this is an PN1 and second image is an PN2 formulations. And next one is an, this is a uh, photographic of in scanning electron microscopy. You can able to see then particle. So this is then uh, vessel. Uh, first one is in PN1. It is magnified in 2000 uh, optical lenses, and second one also PN2. It is also a 2000 optical lenses used to uh, to see then uh, morphological uh, morphological characters of the vessel. This is a morphological. You can able to. It is moreover to then uh, spherical in shapes, and the resins can be. You can able to see then a rough surfaces in there. So this is an uh, Result of in a proponism formation by using an electron image. 
and this is an overall tableau column for then entrapment efficiency and then vessel size you can able to see that first one so entrapment efficiency the pn2 is gives in more uh, drug releases than others so it gives in 71.47 uh, percentage and uh, when come to in vessel size the last one that's a pn6 is in a very smaller in size that is in 2.8 micrometers and compared to others so if you see then a pn2 it gives in 4.9 micrometer so this is an overall uh, results of in entrapment efficiency and vessel size so and this is an results of in in vitro drug release you can able to see that in this also pn6 okay there is a lost formulation which is gives in 88 point percentage of in drug releases uh, in an in vitro drug release studies so from this research you can consider that is in pn6 is in a best formulations i think so so when uh, pn2 is in only in 74 74% percentage drug released it is a lowest thing is a low in this uh, pn2 the span 60 is used but in a uh, pn6 is a span 40 is used i think lost three things that is in the pn4 5 6 so these formulation contains a non ionic surfactant of in span 40 so for in well drug release a span 40 is in best a non ionic surfactant should be used and this is a stability study report as a graphical representation you can able to see this blue color is in a drug which is kept in then 4 to 8 degrees celsius and uh, this green color bar is denoted that is in 30 to 70 degrees celsius and uh, that in between middle it is in a fresh sample prepared it is uh, there is this uh, evaluate then a uh, drug entrapment efficiency so in that you can able to see that this pn2 is given moreover gives in a 70 percentage of in drug releases at 4 to 8 degrees celsius and when compared to 37 degrees celsius it moreover give to 65 but when compared to in pn6 this pn6 only gives an in vitro of in 84 percentage but when compare when coming to in a self life uh, it it shows in very low this uh, pn4 pn5 pn6 so these all the formulations contains a span 40 as well as this span 40 uh, formulations is uh, shows in very low drug concentrations so the remaining drug content was in either it is degraded or, or any other factors which influences this uh, drug so the span 60 the first three uh, formulations pn1 pn2 pn3 moreover all this all the formulations contains in more than 60 percent you can able to see from the graph itself so this is a result of the stability study now let's see move on to the conclusion so as per conclusion of an author the author is reported that by using co acervation phase separation method they have successfully incorporated the valsartan drug in the proniasmal formulations but the present work shows that when the evaluation test it reveals that the type of surfactant used in that and cholesterol lecithin which these ingredients are affect the encapsulation and drug release moreover the encapsulation efficiency as well as the drug release and uh, as well as the stability also is affect that so in this maximum encapsulation is only 71 percentage and drug release is an 88 percentage but uh, from the results, I am told that I am saying that the PN6 is an user more drug release as well as in particle size also low and uh, entrapment efficiency also high. But when come to in a stability study, the PN6 is a fails because it shows a very low entrapment efficiency. Uh, maybe which factors I don't know uh, which factors is affect than a drug content, but some factor is an affecting than PN6. Especially, I think so. Span 40 is in responsible for the degradation of then that chemical. The valsartan drug. The span 40 is an influencing in the uh, drug efficiency of an valsartan. So maybe other non-ionic surfactant should be used in other studies. We can perform then. We can give them better performance, better drug releases also. So thank you. So author is mentioned that the span 60 is an uh, shows a very high encapsulation efficiency 
as well as valsartan pronyosms are quite stable in 48 degree for one month period so maybe in future the work may be in uh, continued and other non ionic surfactants and uh, other lecithins are uh, for, for example lecithin instead of using a soya lecithin you can use so by changing in ingredient we can formulate in a well a quality proniosomal formulations thank you at last thank you very much for your patient listening if any queries or uh, any other suggestions is there please comment in the comment box